In this video, I'm going to show you how to get confidence intervals for standardized beta weights in SPSS. And I'm going to mention at the outset that this is an approximate method. It's not going to yield fully accurate results. If you want a more accurate approach to getting confidence intervals for standardized beta weights, I encourage you to consider using one of the SPSS programs that Lorenzo, Siva, Ferrando, and Chico published in 2010. Now, these programs were developed to conduct a relative weights analysis, but it also includes standardized beta weight confidence intervals that I would describe as fully accurate. I describe how to use this program later in the chapter relevant to relative weights analysis. So what I'm going to show you here is something that's a more basic approach that gives you approximately accurate confidence intervals for standardized beta weights. So first, what you need to do is convert your scores into Z scores. Go into Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and Descriptives. Place all three variables into the Variables box and click Save Standardized Values as Variables and click OK. And SPSS is going to create three variables that are Z scores. So these variables have been transformed from raw scores to standardized scores with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. And so now when I apply a multiple regression on these data, I'm basically tricking SPSS into providing confidence intervals for scores that are standardized and which will correspond to the standardized confidence intervals. Now you need to conduct the multiple regression. Click on Analyze, Regression, Linear, and place the dependent variable standardized scores into the dependent box and click on Z Education and Z IQ into the independence box. Now, if you have the bootstrap utility, I'd encourage you to use that to estimate the confidence intervals associated with the standardized beta weights. So I'm going to click on that, bootstrapping. I'm going to click on 2000, 2000, and bias corrected accelerated. Click continue. But if you do not have the bootstrap utility, click on statistics and click on confidence intervals and level 95%. Click continue and click OK. And so SPSS is going to run this several times because I've got 2,000 resamples specified in the bootstrap utility, but it's also going to produce for me the asymptotic normal distribution theory confidence intervals. And again, I'm kind of tricking SPSS into producing these confidence intervals. So go down to the coefficients table, and we can see that the standardized beta weight associated with education is 0.232. Well, the unstandardized coefficient is also 0.232. I've basically tricked SPSS into thinking these scores were anything but standardized. They are standardized, and that's all that I'm getting. And now the confidence interval reported here, technically SPSS thinks it's about this coefficient, but really it's about this one as well. It's about both. So the standardized 95% confidence intervals correspond to 0.09 lower bound and 0.38 rounded upper bound for education. For IQ score, standardized, the beta weight was 0.174, standardized beta weight, well, unstandardized, it's the same thing because these are Z scores. And here's the lower and upper bound 95% confidence intervals associated with the standardized beta weight, 0.031 to 0.316. Again, these are approximately accurate. You would get more accurate results with dedicated procedures to estimate standardized beta weight confidence intervals. And as I mentioned, this paper here will give it to you in the bootstrap approach. And there's also asymptotic approaches that have been published in the last few years that would be more accurate than what's being produced here. But to my knowledge, there's no program that's implemented it yet, at least not in SPSS. Now, probably a little bit more accurate would be the bootstrap standardized confidence intervals. And these data are fairly non-normally distributed, particularly the dependent variable. And so I'd expect the results to be a little bit different than the asymptotic normal distribution theory confidence intervals. So here's the Z-score education lower and upper bound confidence intervals associated with the standardized beta weight of 0.232. Well, it's standardized in the sense that we've tricked SPSS into analyzing these standardized data. And here are the standardized 95% confidence intervals associated with the ZIQ score predictor variable, 0.02 to 0.37 suggesting a significant effect, which is not consistent with this p-value, which is suggesting there's a non-significant effect. Again, I talk about how the wild bootstrap would probably be more appropriate here because I violated the assumption of normality 
and I've also violated the assumption of homoscedasticity, so it's a double barrel problem here. Look at the comparisons between these standardized beta weights. There's a difference, it's not a huge difference. So 0 0.09 versus 0 0.12 or 0 0.38 versus 0.33, little bit of a difference, 0 0.02 versus 0 0.031. So I would probably trust the bootstrap confidence intervals more than the, than the asymptotic normal distribution theory ones. But if you don't have the bootstrap utility, then you're going to be stuck with the asymptotic normal distribution theory. If you don't have the bootstrap utility, but you're game for doing a little bit of syntax, then you can use the Lorenza Siva approach, which I describe in the relative weights analysis portion of the advanced topic of the chapter. Now with these standardized confidence intervals, you could report them in a report. Again, you'd acknowledge them as approximately accurate. And you can also test the difference between two standardized beta weights based on the approach that I describe in the textbook next.